And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer before we begin. So come on, let's stand up together as we always do. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and let's get started this evening. Amen. Brother Wayne, I tell you what, it's been a long time. I've been praying every Sunday morning two times. Come on and pray for us and open us up. Hey, y'all. I miss y'all. <laughs> let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to just come into your house. Thank you for your grace and mercy and how you watch over us, Lord. And Father, we just thank you. And, and God, we just we just want to come in with a spirit of expectation, God, and just a spirit of praise. Father, we just thank you that 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 you love us like you do. And I pray for all those that, that will call out your name, Lord. We pray for Danny, Lord. Yes. Right now, Father, we just lift him up. God, thank you that you're in the midst of everything that we face. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Give the Lord a hand by the I was alone in Adam. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven. Say there's work to do. I took my master's hand. Yeah. 
Sweet, sweet. 
doesn't come easy, is there? Amen. There's not many things that's just going to fall into your lap or fall into your hands, but you're going to have to fight for those things. It is the same way with Brother Nehemiah that we have been preaching about uh, on Wednesday night for a few weeks now. Uh, I've not been really going straight through there. I've just been uh, kind of going through there. I've been reading, and God's been giving me different messages to share as we have been kind of getting through this difficult season, and especially as we're, I feel I'm praying and believing that we're coming to the end of it, and things are restarting, and we're restarting the economy and restarting businesses and things like that. Nehemiah was rebuilding the walls. He was starting a building program. And so I felt led to come here and God give me different messages that I've been preaching online on Wednesday nights. And God has led me back here tonight. And, and for Nehemiah, this program that he was in, this building program, as he went back to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, it was one that was worth fighting for. It was one of difficulty. It was one in which Nehemiah faced much opposition. Amen. God had sent him down there, and when Nehemiah got there, there were several things that happened that were good that came of that. There were really a revival that got sparked. The people got excited again about the things of God, and they got to work. The Bible says that they had a mind to work, and they began rebuilding the walls. But this was no small task, what Nehemiah had to do, and there was opposition all around. Let me just give you a few things of, that Nehemiah faced. Let me point out a few things of opposition that Nehemiah faced. Listen to this. He faced things such as this, ridicule, ridiculing questions. He faced criticism, threats on his life, weary workers, fear of violence, some labor strikes, intimidation, blackmail. They literally tried to blackmail him to get him to quit and to leave. And they even, even sent a lying prophet to, to speak to him or speak over him, but he would not believe it. Praise God. Nehemiah faced a lot of different opposition rebuilding the walls. Of, and so there's a lot that we can learn from him because each one of us know that in life there's a lot of opposition that comes. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of difficulty that comes. And so we're going to learn from, from Brother Nehemiah tonight. But before we get into this, let me pray over the reading of God's Word. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house tonight. Lord, I thank you for every soul that is gathered here tonight. I pray for their protection, that you may keep them, Lord. I thank you for each one that is watching us online. Lord, we thank you for them as well. God, may you protect and keep them. Father, tonight as we begin to study your word, we ask that you would stir our hearts, you would encourage our hearts, and help us to learn from Nehemiah, God, that when we make the things that we might need as we face opposition in this world, we love you tonight, Jesus, and we thank you for it all. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And amen. I'm going to tell y'all what, I've been preaching to an empty church for the last six or seven weeks, and it's a little like, almost like having to learn to ride a bike again, just a little bit. <laughs> As I'm standing up here getting used to y'all actually looking at me because I've been peering at that little camera for the last six to eight weeks. So it's just a little bit different up here, amen? Feels like the first time I've ever preached before, almost, amen? <laughs> now y'all watching me. See, see when y'all weren't here, I, could, I just pretended that all of y'all were excited and saying amen and all of that, just cheering me on. But now I got to look at some of y'all's faces, amen. I just don't know if I like that or not. I'm just, I'm just cutting up tonight. I'm glad that you're here. I'm thankful that you're here, and I'm thankful for the, for the opportunity to preach to you. For you that are watching online, we're thankful for that opportunity to preach to you. But talking about Nehemiah, Nehemiah faced a lot of opposition, and he faced a lot of difficulty in what God had called him to do. But it's interesting to me that he never allowed opposition to get the best of him. You know yourselves that when in life, we will always have something that we're against almost. It almost is some obstacle that we're overcoming. Whether it's in our marriage or in our family, there's obstacles, there's opposition, there's difficulty. Whether it's uh, with your children, whether it's with your finances, whether it's with uh, ministry-wise. Maybe uh, it, we, we're overcoming 
a difficulty right now globally and nationally and statewide. And there's always opposition. There's always something there that tries to hinder you and something that tries to stop you. Amen. It's always there. It's always been that way. Go back to Genesis to Revelation. There's always good versus evil. It's always going to be a fight, amen, in this life. It's never necessarily just going to be handed unto you. But Nehemiah teaches us a few things in which that I want to share with you this evening, especially when you're in the face of opposition. Number one is this, face it. Face it. Say that with me. Face it. When you are, uh, when you come against opposition and difficulty, you need to do this to begin with, face it. Face it. In all that I have read about Nehemiah, in all that I have studied about Nehemiah, and I did a whole series of back in, I think, 2014 or third of the book of Nehemiah, through my studying of Nehemiah, through my rereading it over the last few weeks. So do you know what I have found when opposition arose against Nehemiah? Do you know that he never turned tail and run? Amen. When his critics came out, when he first got to Jerusalem and he started to talk to the people and to encourage them to get to work on the walls and people laughed and they scorned him and they despised him, he didn't turn back and leave Jerusalem and go back to Shushan where he was a cupbearer. No, he stayed there and he faced that opposition. He faced the people laughing at him. They, he faced the people that were ridiculed. Do you know what they were doing? When they were making fun of him. You know what they were hoping when they made fun of him and they laughed at him and they mocked him for doing the work of God? Do you know what they were hoping? They were hoping that Nehemiah was going to leave and go back where he came from. When, when they kept threatening him and, 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 and mocking him and the different things that they did, it's interesting. They were hoping that he just quit, that he would just leave, that he, he would give up. But you know what? Nehemiah never gave up. Even though he faced this opposition, he, even though he was, had, was faced with difficult opposition, he faced every problem head on. Head on. He didn't just put it to the side and it'll just go away. He, he didn't run from it. He faced it. He faced it. One example from last week's lesson I preached on uh, Nehemiah chapter 5 last week, whether you got to watch it or not. Nehemiah uh, learns that his workers, a lot of the people that are working on the walls, helping him, he learns that they are struggling to survive. That their land and their, is being taken from them. Even some of their children are being taken away into slavery and they're struggling to pay their taxes. And other people, other Jewish people, are exacting usury upon them. In other words, that the poor folks were barely getting by and they were having to go to other folks to borrow money and the, the lender was charging them such a ridiculous interest rate that they couldn't pay those loans and mortgages back and so they'd come in and take their houses and take their land. They were taking advantage of, of his people that were working in a difficult situation. People would take advantage of you in difficult times. But you know what Nehemiah did? Nehemiah didn't just brush that off and leave. You know that he faced that opposition. And he went to those people that were doing that wrong. And you know what he said? He said, what you are doing is not right. Amen. He said, is this of God? Should you not fear God in what you are doing? He faced the opposition. He faced the difficulty. He did not run from it. He didn't just sweep it under the rug and leave it there. But he faced it. He faced his opposition. Let us take note tonight from Nehemiah in the face of opposition. Face it. Don't quit at the first sign of trouble. Don't tuck tail and run, but face it. I like this quote that I read many years ago. It says this, pain is temporary, but quitting is forever. Pain is temporary, but quitting is forever. Too many times we're just focused in the temporary or just in the moment or that this is just painful, I'm just going to quit. But if we would just hold on, if we keep facing, pressing in and pressing on, we get through that moment and all the joy that comes when you reach the other side. Face that opposition. Face that problem. Face that difficulty. 
Second thing that you need that Nehemiah teaches us, us, us to do is this. Faith it. Faith it. Face it and faith it. F-A-I-T-H. Make sure y'all understand it in my English tonight. Not faith it, but faith it. Amen. Look in your Bibles at Nehemiah chapter 2 now. Nehemiah chapter 2, beginning in verse 19. But when Sanballat, the Hornite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite official, and Jeshem, the Ab Abraham, heard of it, they laughed at us and despised us and said, What is this thing that you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? This is the group of men through the entire book of Nehemiah that were just there like a thorn in his side, in Nehemiah's side, continually, chapter after chapter, they were just in a, a opposition of Nehemiah. Here, when Nehemiah first gets the people stirred up to rebuild the walls, they start laughing, mocking, and asking these scornful questions. Notice what Nehemiah did, how his response. He says this in verse 20. So I answered them and said to them, this is what he said to the naysayers, the God of heaven himself will, will prosper us. He said, the God in the midst of the opposition, in the midst of these people trying to hinder the work of God, he said, that's all right. He said, the God of heaven himself shall prosper us. And then it goes on to say, therefore we his servants will rise and we will build, but you have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. Amen. Did you notice what the Nehemiah did? He faced it. Amen. In the midst of trouble, he faced it, but then he faced it. When they mocked him, they made fun of him, he declared, hey, the God of heaven is on our side. Amen. He wasn't concerned about those men or what they said. He was concerned about what God had to say and what God could do. Do you know what Nehemiah knew? Nehemiah knew that God had called him to Jerusalem. He had been called there by a burden that was placed upon his heart. Do you know that God will call you to do things of, sometimes by simply putting a burden on your heart? Sometimes you, you hear the, a preacher be, will be preaching and he'll say that God called me to do this, God called me to do that. It's not necessarily that that preacher or that teacher or whoever heard a vocal voice that God said to do something, but a burden was placed upon them that was so heavy that they could not get away from it. They were called by a burden. Nehemiah was called by a burden. If you read chapter 1 of Nehemiah, he had a burden for Jerusalem. He had a burden for that city, that holy city of God that was broken down. And he went to Jerusalem because of the burden that God had placed upon his heart. He knew God had called him there by the burden. He knew that God had also opened a door for him to be there. Understand that Nehemiah was a cupbearer in Artaxerxes' palace in Shushan. He was a Persian king. Nehemiah served a Persian king hundreds and hundreds of miles away from the city of Jerusalem. Nehemiah, when he heard about Jerusalem being broken down, he prayed unto God and he fasted that God would use him in some way to go to Jerusalem. Four months later, somebody say four months. Four months later, God opened a door, and through that king, seeing the countenance of Nehemiah, Nehemiah was able to tell him about Jerusalem, and the king sent him down there to rebuild the walls. Nehemiah knew that he had a burden. Nehemiah knew God had called him. Nehemiah knew that God had opened a door for him to get there. And because he knew that, he trusted in God. He hadn't heard, he had heard a vocal voice, but he knew where God had called him to. He had faith in what God was calling him to do. And in the midst of opposition, he knew if God had brought him there, God would bring him through. Amen. Sister Erna had that saying, what Sister Julie did, if God brings you to it, she'll bring, he'll bring you through. If God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. Nehemiah knew that God had brought him to that place. And my goodness, three men laughing at him was not going to stop what God was going to do. Amen. Amen. So when 
God brings you somewhere, when God calls you, and you know that God has called you, can I encourage you instead of being downtrodden, getting ready to quit, look up and say, God brought me here and God's going to bring me through this. Amen. Do you know what there's been many times in my ministry? I, I don't care what anybody may say. I know that I know that I know that I know that God called me to preach in the pastor. Amen. I didn't say that I was the best one on the face of the planet. I didn't say that I had the best English. I, didn't, I, I can't articulate the, the most wonderful words as I preach the gospel. I, sometimes I scratch my head and I wonder why God has called me to pastor. I realize sometimes I do. I thank God for his anointing. I thank him for calling me. I know that I know that I know for the way that God called me. April 1st, 2008. I know that he called me. And do you know what? It's because of that I know that I know that burden that God placed on my heart. There's been many times that opposition has come, but I remember that God has brought me here, and I remember that if God brought me here, God will bring me through this as well. Amen. When you face opposition, when you face difficulty, face it and faith it. Lean upon God's promises. Lean upon God's word. Lean upon that inclination, that stirring of the Holy Spirit as well, that word unto your spirit. Amen. If God brings you to it, he'll bring you to it. He will bring you through it as well. I want you to notice, note this about Nehemiah being a man of faith. Nehemiah was a man of faith, and Nehemiah was a devoted and a consistent man of prayer. Nehemiah was a devoted man of prayer. Mm -hmm. In 13 chapters, there's some 17 prayers that are mentioned. 13 chapters, there's 17 prayers mentioned in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a devoted man unto prayer. Yes. Whenever he would face that difficulty, it's interesting for me to see chapter 1 he did it. When he got that burden on his heart, when he first heard about Jerusalem, when he first heard about the city of Jerusalem and the walls being broken down, the first thing he did, he cried out to God in prayer. Yeah. When people began making fun of him, and you're going to see an opposition comes in a minute, he prayed. When he stood before the king, he prayed. He prayed in his spirit. He prayed into the Lord. He prayed continually throughout this. And that it was his strength. He was rooted to God in devoted prayer. Be men and women of faith in the midst of opposition. I preach a lot about prayer. I talk about prayer. I talk about interceding for other people on, on Sunday morning, intercession. Prayer is such a vital part of our relationship to God. So much more than we than we give credit to it sometimes. He was rooted in him deeply in prayer. He was a man of faith. He always turned to the Lord for help, and the Lord brought him through. Faith it. Face it, faith it, and figure it. Number three, figure it. Figure it. What do you mean by that? In chapter four, I mentioned this a few weeks ago on Wednesday night, but I want to mention it again to you. We read about, once again, Nehemiah was facing opposition. In Nehemiah chapter four, we read that he's facing opposition and men had threatened those same men that we read about, Tobiah and Geshem and them, they were threatening to harm and they were threatening to attack those men that were working on the wall. They threatened to come in there and hurt them. Nehemiah, we'll read it, Nehemiah chapter 4. Uh, it says in verse 7, y'all want to read it, and it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, the, uh, to buy the Arabs, the Ammonites were beginning to restore the gaps, saw that these gaps were beginning to be closed, that they became angry. And all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and to create confusion. They were going to attack. So guess what? This is what the Bible says in verse 9. Nehemiah 4, verse 9. Here when Nehemiah gets this word, that these people are going to attack to hinder the work. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God. There you go back to what I preached about the event of mine, being a man of prayer. He began to pray. And do you know what God did? 
God gave him a way to continue the work. The Bible says that Nehemiah then set up guards around those that was working on the wall. It, let's read this in verse 10. It says this. Then Judah said, the strength of the labor is failing. There is so much rubble. I'm the wrong verse. verse. Let's see. Verse 13. I'm sorry. Verse 13. Therefore, I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the opening, and I set the people according to their families with their swords, with their spears, and their bows. Look at verse 17. It says, those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that one hand they worked with construction and with the other hand they held a weapon. Mm -hmm. When Nehemiah was faced with the difficulty of people attacking his workers, when he was faced with the difficulty of, okay, how am I going to continue on? What am I going to do? These men are saying they're going to come down here and attack and create confusion and make harm people. What am I going to do? The first thing he faced is he began to pray, and then God gave him a way to figure it out. Mm -hmm. He set up guards, amen, to protect the people. Not only that, there was men working with one hand, and they had his sword in the other hand, amen. I guess none of us would be carrying a sword. We might have that nine or that forty-five in one hand and be building and hammering with the other hand. Amen. God showed him a way to figure it out. Amen. You see where I'm coming from? In a difficult position, when he wasn't sure what to do or the next step, God gave him the next step. God gave him the wisdom of how to continue to move forward when some people would have just given up. When some people would just walk away, oh, oh, they're, they're threatening us? Oh, no, I'm out. I'm done. I, I'm not doing that. Oh, no. God gave him a way to figure it out. And he continued on in the work of, of God. Amen. Can I tell you something, friend? When opposition comes, when things get difficult, don't quit. Don't quit. But seek the Lord for a way to figure it out. If there's a will, there's a way. He is the way maker. Amen. He is the doorkeeper. Amen. Amen. He is a miracle worker today. I know when you get to a point, you say, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to go forward. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this situation. I don't know how I'm going to get past this. You ever been there? You ever hit a roadblock? Praise the Lord. You ever hit a roadblock before? Like the, like the Hebrew children, when they were coming out of Exodus, when they were coming out of Egypt, they got in the Red Sea and hit a roadblock. But God made a way. Amen. God make a way. Yes. When you think there's not a way. That's right. Faith it. Amen. He'll figure it. Amen. Turn to him in the midst of, of those things. Just look at what, what the Lord's blessed us to do in the churches in the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. I know we ain't been able to meet in the church house. We ain't been able to come like we normally would for Sunday school and church and Wednesday night. But thank God we've had the ability to share the gospel through Facebook. Yes, Lord. You know what I told them Sunday morning? I reckon I can't preach too hard about it anymore, amen? Because God has used it for an opportunity to bless me. We've had more people looking at our sermons and videos than we ever have before, amen? It's a blessing. And you know what? <clears throat> you know what? Y'all be scared to death because I just coughed, amen? <laughs> I'm a horse, I'm a horse. But do you know what? And too, it, it's a free service that we're blessed with to you. Amen. God has made a way. You know, I never thought, who would have ever dreamed about parking in your car to come to church? But we've been doing that, and God blessed it. Amen. Amen. Like I told you at the beginning of the world, we've had people I've never seen come to church before. And I've got to meet new people, new faces that are looking for a church. And they came to the house of God. They came and they sat in their church, but they heard the word of God. Amen. Amen. God will help you figure it. Amen. Amen. He'll help you make a way. He'll, he'll show you the way where there seems to be no way. Amen. Woo! Isn't God good? Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. 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 When you face with opposition and difficulty, face it. Faith it. Figure it. God give you a way. And then lastly, number four, finish it. Finish it, amen. 
Listen to Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15 and 16. Nehemiah 6, 15 and 16. I didn't give a man the, the notes soon enough. I didn't give her the notes to put up there. I said, just make y'all turn in your Bibles. Amen. Nehemiah 6, 15. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elu in 52 days. The walls that he was working on was finished in 52 days. <clears throat> And it happened, listen to this, when our enemies heard of it and all the nations around us saw these things, that they were very disheartened in their own eyes for they perceived that this work was done by our God. Amen. And you hear that first part says that he finished the wall in 52 days. You know what? It is one thing to start something, but it's another thing to finish it. Amen. You know, everybody gets excited about starting something. They mean, you know, people want to start this. You know, we're going to start this and start this and start this. I, I, I won't even go where I picked it to go. But we <laughs> start things, amen. But you know where there's real joy in something is when you complete it. Amen. Yeah. King Solomon said this in Ecclesiastes 7 8. He says this finishing is better than starting, amen. If Jesus spoke about starting things, and he said in Luke chapter 9, he said, when you start something, make sure you count the cost of it so that you can finish it. Yeah. Yes, Lord. That he understood the joy of finishing. He wants us to finish what we start. Amen. Amen. That's the best part. Finishing is better than starting. And not only does finishing no affect you, but did you notice it also affects the naysayers as well? Mm -hmm. All those men that were making fun, mm -hmm. all those men that tried to stop them, all those men that tried to, to keep them from finishing the walls, notice what it says, that they were disheartened in their very disheartened in their very own eyes. It says that they realized that this work was of God. Amen. You don't know why? Because Nehemiah gave credit to God from the very beginning. Y'all remember Nehemiah 2 that I read, <clears throat> read to you at the very beginning of this service? Remember when, when they started making fun of Nehemiah? He said, what are you doing? They were laughing at him. You remember what he said? The God of heaven himself will prosper us. Amen. He, gave credit to, he gave credit to God on day one. Yes. And then by day 52, <laughs> even his enemies realized God has done yes. this great thing. Amen. When you finish something, it brings glory and honor to God. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you, when you start something, give credit to God for it. Amen. And when you finish it, give credit to God for it. Amen. Amen. You know what? <clears throat> With finishing, the, the devil is a good one to try and hinder people from finishing what they start. You know what? We've all faced difficult days. We've faced difficult days right now. But you know what? I think about those that that live through things such as the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. Those that live through the various world wars. Think about those that live through those conflicts. Do you know that the Civil War lasted about four years? World War I lasted about four years. World War II lasted about six years. And I could go on and list all these different wars. Those, those, all of those were great wars and of great casualties. But do you know what those men and women kept doing through those years of conflict? They kept fighting. They kept fighting. Mm -hmm. They kept fighting until it was finished. They kept fighting until it was finished. I want to encourage you to keep fighting until it's finished. Amen. 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 Whatever you're facing, whatever, you, whatever it is that you've been called to, whatever it is that opposition comes against you, against your home or marriage or whatever it is, keep fighting until it's finished. I think about the words of Paul, and I'm going to close. Y'all be coming on to the music. I was reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course, my course. I have kept the faith. He said, I kept fighting. I kept, even when opposition came, 
in this old Christian life, when opposition came, if, if anybody ever faced it, the apostle Paul did. Amen. But he said, I kept fighting. I finished my course. I would encourage you, boy. We're going to all face opposition. We're going to face difficulty. Face it. Face it head on. Face it. Trust, trust today in the Lord. Figure, he, he'll help you make a way. He'll help you to figure it out. Even when you don't understand, you don't know what the next step will be, he'll help you figure it. Amen. And he'll help you finish it as well. Amen. He'll help you finish it as well. Your battles, just like all the battles, the like battles that lasted four years, World War II last six years, you know what? They all came to an end. Yeah. Them things that you find, they'll come to an end. Mm -hmm. You'll win that war. We've got victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep on keeping on tonight. Right. You stand up to your feet all over the house this evening. <laughs> Amen. They fix to the sing. They're going to sing like this song. I give you this opportunity tonight as we close our service. Y'all know what we haven't been able to come? Have, a, have an altar call or prayer service in, in several weeks, haven't we? I've been trying to pray, but no one able to come to the altar. You know what? We take things for granted sometimes. Amen. We take for granted just coming into the house of the Lord and even worshiping together, hearing the word taught, and, or just kneeling at the altar. And so tonight, if you need prayer, if you need special prayer, or you want to just come and pray about something that you're going through, you, you want somebody to pray with you, you let us know tonight. But let's take advantage of the next few moments. Service ain't over yet. Let's take advantage of the next few moments as we close this service. Maybe you're facing something real difficult. Maybe you're overwhelmed in the midst of the battle that you're going through. Can I tell you something? You'll make a way. You'll get you through it. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. As we sing tonight, y'all are